was in high school. It was a freezing Monday morning, the day after Easter. My friend and I were huddled together in the street corner, stamping our feet, blowing into our gloves, anticipating the warmth of the school bus. I asked if the cold put a crimp on her Easter celebration. She told me her family didn't celebrate Easter. Jesus didn't rise from the dead. In fact, her church taught that Jesus was not the creator God of the Bible. The Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit were three different persons. They could not be one God. One plus one plus one equals three, not one. The Trinity was nonsense. More recently, a group of us were seated around the table discussing Jesus. He told our group that Jesus was not the creator God of the Bible. He said the Trinity was nonsense. As a Muslim, he worshipped one God, Allah. Christians worship three gods. Is God three in one, as the song claims? Or do Christians worship three gods, as my high school friend and the Muslim seated at our table claimed? Who is Jesus? Is he the creator God of the Bible? What have Christians historically believed about him? Atheist New Testament scholars and historians tell us that within weeks of Jesus' resurrection or his crucifixion, the primitive church was reciting a creed about him. The creed is recorded in 1 Corinthians 15, verses 3 to 8. The creed lists nine facts about Jesus. Christ died for our sins according to the scriptures. He was buried. He was raised on the third day according to the scriptures, and he appeared to his followers. Christianity spread outward from Jerusalem to the rest of the Roman Empire. Christians didn't worship the Roman gods or were down, bow down to the emperor. As the Corinthian Creed proclaimed, they worshiped the risen Christ. Christians were under constant threat of persecution for their religious beliefs. Many of them were uneducated, illiterate, and heresies were creeping into the church. These false teachings included the following. Our minds cannot grasp God. Our senses can't observe him. That is, he can't be seen, touched, or heard. Our body is a prison, trapping our true human self. Salvation could be gained through a special form of secret knowledge. Combined, these beliefs, beliefs later came to be known as Gnosticism. Persecution, illiteracy, and heresy were challenges to the gospel message of salvation by grace through faith in the risen Christ. Christian leaders responded to these challenges. In the second century, they began to outline core Christian teachings. To summarize the teachings of the apostles about creation, Jesus' birth, life, death, resurrection, ascension. This led to the development of a formula we know as the Apostles' Creed. It's a baptismal confession coming out of ancient Rome it takes a Trinitarian form, but it doesn't state the nature of Jesus' divinity or define the relationship between members of the Trinity. This is the oldest known form of the creed. I believe in God the Father Almighty and in Jesus Christ, his only begotten Son, our Lord, who was born of the Holy Ghost and the Virgin Mary, crucified under Pontius Pilate and buried. The third day he rose from the dead. He ascended into heaven and sitteth at the right hand of the Father. From hence, he shall come to judge the quick and the dead. And in the Holy Ghost, the Holy Church, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, the life everlasting. Early Christians believed that Jesus was the same in being or essence as God the Father. This was challenged by a fourth century church leader from Alexandria, Egypt. Arius taught that al although Jesus was God the Son, he was created, the most perfect of creations. Arius's teachings implied that there was a time when Jesus did not exist. In AD 321, in Alexandria, 100 Christian leaders denounced Arius's teachings. The controversy continued to rage throughout the Roman Empire. Emperor Constantine called a meeting of Christian leaders to solve the division. Over 300 Christian leaders from across the Roman Empire assembled at Nicaea in AD 325. The council at Nicaea wrote a creed. All but two attendees adopted the, tree, the creed. This profession of, ta of faith takes a Trinitarian form. The Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit are all involved in creating 
the universe and life. God the Father is the creator. All things are through Jesus Christ. And the Holy Spirit is the giver of life. Let's look in detail about what it says about Jesus. We believe in one Lord, Jesus Christ, the only Son of God, eternally begotten of the Father, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten, not made, of one being with the Father. Through him, all things were made. Jesus is God from God, true light from true, or true God from true God, of one being with the Father. Now, what happens if Jesus is not God? Think very carefully about this. If Jesus is not God, then the God he is from is not God. If Jesus is not God, then the God he is from is not God. What happens if Jesus is not true God? Think carefully about this. If Jesus is not true God, then the true God that he is from is not true God. If Jesus is not true God, then the true God that he is from is not true God. Jesus is of one being with the Father. Well, what happens to the Father if you take away one being? Think very carefully about this. If you take away one being, you take away both Jesus and the Father. If you take away one being, you take away both Jesus and the Father. Here's how the church describes the Trinity. The church describes the Trinity as three who's and one what. On the outside of this triangle are the three who's, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. The Father is not the Son. The Father is not the Holy Spirit. The Son is not the Father. The Son is not the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit is not the Father. The Holy Spirit is not the Son. The inside of the triangle is the one what. The what is God. There is only one God. God is the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. God is all the who's all the time and never just one of them. Now, in Genesis, <clears throat> God tells us he created two who's and one what. The two who's were Adam and Eve. Adam was not Eve. Eve was not Adam. And God created one what? That what is humanity. There's only one humanity. Humanity is Adam and Eve and their descendants. Humanity is all the who's all the time and never just one of them. Here are some common analogies for the Trinity, an egg. An egg is like God because it consists of the shell, the yolk, and the egg white, and yet it's one egg. An egg is unlike God. An egg can be divided into parts. God cannot be divided into parts. What about a three-leaf clover or shamrock? The shamrock is like God, the three leaves are one plant, just as the three persons of the Trinity are one God. A shamrock is unlike God. If you take away one of the leaves, you still have a clover plant. But if you take away one of the persons of the Trinity, then God no longer exists. How about water? Water is like God. It's still water, whether it's a solid, a liquid, or a gas. Water is not like God. Water changes or switches from one state or mode to another. God does not change from one mode to another. How about the sun? The sun is like God. The sun gives off light, heat, and radiation rays. The sun wouldn't be the sun if it didn't give off those rays. The sun is not like God. Light, heat, and radiation rays are not the sun. The sun is an object, a nuclear furnace, or a man. A man is like God. He can be a husband, a son, or an uncle at the same time. A man is not like God. A man is only one person. God is three persons. What about nitrate? In organic chemistry class, you learn about resonance theory. Some molecules have more than one structure or resonance. Nitrate is like God. Nitrate has three resonances. Nitrate is all three structures all the time, never just one of them. 
Well, that's exactly how Christians describe the triune God. God is all three persons all the time, never just one of them. Nitrate is not like God. Nitrate is part of creation. God is the creator. Analogies can lead to a misunderstanding of the Trinity. For instance, the Trinity proclaims that God is three distinct persons. Modalism denies this, teaching that God is one person who revealed himself in three forms or modes. Modalism claims that God revealed himself as Jesus during the in Incarnation, and God revealed himself as the Holy Spirit at Pentecost. United Pentecostal churches and United Apostolic churches deny the Trinity and teach modalism. Modalism is a false teaching or a heresy. The Trinity proclaims the deity of Jesus Christ. Arianism denies the deity of Jesus Christ. He may be a lesser God, a great teacher or prophet, or just a guy. Liberal churches and seminaries deny the deity of Christ, as does the Jesus Seminar, Unitarians, Jehovah's Witnesses. Arianism is a false teaching or heresy. The Trinity proclaims that there is one God. Tritheism denies the unity of God, saying that the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit are three gods. This is what my high school friend and the Muslim at our table thought I believed. Now, Mormons believe the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit are three gods. Mormonism is tritheistic. Tritheism is a false teaching or heresy. Let's replace this diagram with a sentence that describes the Trinity. There is only one God, but in the, uni in the unity of the Godhead, there are three eternal co-equal persons where each person is independently conscious and self-directing but never acting independently of one another and always manifesting the same character attributes in the same nature. So far, we've looked at how the church describes God. How does the Bible describe God? We can identify the creator by his descriptive attributes. The creator is holy. The creator is love. Holy means to be separate. The creator is holy, other, separate transcendent from his creation, from the universe. No one else is holy like the Lord. He's majestic in holiness. The seraphim above him cried, holy, holy, holy is the Lord. The creator is love. God is love. He loved the world so much he gave his only son. He loves us so much that he calls us his children. Love is relational. It's between people. It's other-focused giving of oneself. Well, the Creator is holy and love. He's separate from the world, and He loves the world. He made the world. Who, who did the Creator love before He made the world? The title of the song I played at the beginning of the presentation comes from 1 Corinthians. Paul tells us that there is no God but one. Here are the verses I quoted on the bottom of the pages of the song. Moses described God as the Lord your Father who made you. John said of Jesus, all things were made through him. Job said, the Spirit of God has made me. Moses wrote that the Lord is God, there is no other God. God told Isaiah, I am the Lord beside me, there is no God. Malachi said we are created by one God. Has not one God created us? There is only one God. There is only one creator. There is only one creator God, the Father the Son, and the Holy Spirit are the one creator God. The Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit loved each other before they made the world. I discovered that the Old Testament has a lot to say about the plural oneness of the creator. I set what I discovered to music. You will need to watch the screen closely as the next clip is played. Um, be sure to notice that the creator has a name.
Ken Samples, in his book, A World of Difference, points out that the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit are each called God, and each are called Lord. The Father is called God. God the Father placed his seal of approval on Jesus. The Father is called Lord. He made the earth and the heavens. Jesus is called God. Thomas called him God. We are to confess that Jesus is Lord and to believe that God raised him from the dead. The Holy Spirit is called God. Peter told Ananias that when he lied to the Holy Spirit, he lied to God. The Holy Spirit is called Lord. The Lord is the Spirit. The Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit are distinct persons. When Jesus was baptized, the Spirit of God descended on him, and a voice from heaven said, This is my Son. The next two charts are from a world of difference. Ken Samples points out that all three have the qualities of deity. All three are self-existent. The Father gives life to all men. The Son has life in himself. The Holy Spirit is the spirit of life. All three are immutable. The Father does not change. Jesus is the same yesterday, today, and forever. And we reflect God's unchanging glory, glory that comes from the Spirit. All three are omnipresent. No one can hide from the Father. He fills heaven and earth. Jesus is with us always to the very end of the age. We cannot flee from the Spirit. All three are omniscient. No one can fathom the Father's understanding. In Christ are hidden all the treasures of wisdom and knowledge. The Holy Spirit is the one who reveals God to us. All three are omnipotent. The Father made the heavens and the earth by his great power. Jesus created all things and all things hold together in him. The Spirit was present during creation, hovering over the waters. All three do the works of deity. All three do the work of creation. The Father created man and breathed into him the breath of life. All things were made through Jesus. The Spirit was present during creation. All three do the work of salvation. The Father is a righteous God and a Savior. Everyone who calls on Jesus' name will be saved. The Holy Spirit saves us by washing and renewing us. All three brought about Jesus' incarnation. The Father prepared a body for Jesus. Jesus shared in our humanity. The Holy Spirit came upon Mary, and she conceived and bore a son, Jesus. All three are involved in Jesus' resurrection. The Father raised Jesus to life. Jesus said if the Jews destroyed his body, he would raise it again in, in three days. It was through the Spirit that Jesus was resurrected. All three are involved in the work of judgment. The Father will bring every deed into judgment, whether it is good or evil. The, Holy, the Father has entrusted all judgment to the Son. The Holy Spirit convicts the world of guilt, righteousness, and judgment. Their, their roles are different, but their being or essence is the same. There's no subordination of being or essence. All three are called God. All three are called Lord. All three possess the qualities of deity. All three do the works of deity. Their descriptive att attributes, nature, and glory are the same. Jesus affirmed that God is a plural one God. Jesus was walking in the temple in Solomon's colonnade. The Jews gathered around him and said, If you are the Christ, tell us plainly. Jesus responded that the miracles he did spoke for him. Then he said, I and the Father are one. At that, the Jews picked up stones to stone him. And Jesus asked them, For which of these miracles do you stone me? They replied, We are not stoning you for any of these, but for blasphemy, because you, a mere man, claim to be God. Then... Jesus reminded them that the Hebrew word for God, Elohim, is plural. He quoted Psalm 82, 6. Is it not written in your law? I have said you are gods. I have said you are Elohim. Elohim is a plural noun. Elohim can refer to heavenly beings, any god or gods, images of God, judges acting in the Creator's name. Jesus was claiming to act in God's name. But he was doing more than that. In Hebrew, Eloah is the singular noun for God. Eloah means God, singular, one God. 
The creator did something profound when he chose a word for God in Genesis 1.1. He didn't choose Eloah, he chose Elohim. He chose the plural noun for God. Genesis 1.1 reads, in the beginning, Elohim, God's plural, created the heavens and the earth. Recall that the creator said he was only one God. Deuteronomy 6.4 reads, Hear, O Israel, Yahweh, our Elohim, our God's plural, Yahweh is one. When Elohim denotes the creator, it's translated as God, singular, and God is capitalized. Jesus was emphasizing the plural oneness of Elohim, the creator. He told the Jews, the Father is in me, and I in the Father. Jesus claimed that God's name is, or his authority, is shared by three persons. He said, all authority in heaven and on earth has been given to me. Therefore, go and make disciples of all nations, baptizing them in the name, singular, the name of the Father and the Son and of the Holy Spirit, and teaching them to obey everything I have commanded you. And surely I'm with you always to the end of the age. Do you remember from the song what the Creator's name is? Jesus called himself by God's name. I tell you the truth, Jesus answered. Before Abraham was born, I am. Only a triune creator can fulfill our deepest hopes. No, no other God can do that. For instance, the persons of the Godhead retain their individuality in the Godhead. The Trinity makes sense of our longing, our hope, to retain our individual identity while being perfectly united with others. No other God can deliver that. Jesus put it this way, He, the Holy Spirit, will be in you. Again, Jesus put it this way, that all of them may be one, Father, just as you are in me and I am in you, that they may be one as we are one, I in them and you in me. We retain our individuality while being intimately united with the triune creator and because of him united with each other. The Trinity makes sense of our longing, our deep hope to be loved unconditionally. Only a triune creator can fulfill that hope. No, no other God can even come close to doing that. Genesis says we are created in the image of God and in his likeness. The Father loves the Son. He loved the Son before the world was created. He eternally and unconditionally loves the Son. And we live in the eternal and unconditional love that the Father has for the Son. No other God can deliver that kind of love. Jesus put it this way, As the Father has loved me, so have I loved you. My high school friend told me I worship three gods. She said Jesus was not the creator God of the Bible. My church said the creator God of the Bible was triune. Who was right? I learned that the Old Testament described the Creator as a plural one God, that Jesus described the Creator as a plural one God, that three persons share the Creator's name, and I learned that historic Christianity taught that the Creator is triune. The Creator is one what? That what is God? The Creator is three persons, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. He is all three persons all the time and never just one of them. I learned that only a triune creator can fulfill our deepest longings, our deepest hopes. More recently, the Muslims sitting at our table said, Christians worship three gods. Three cannot be one. He worshiped one God, Allah. Our group was snacking on potato chips as we were talking. He picked up three empty chip bags. These are three bags, not one, he said. You cannot call these three one. The Trinity is not logical. So I said to the group at our table, triune things are common. I picked up one of the bags and said, this bag is triune. It is one what and three things. The one what is the bag. The three things are the space it occupies, the stuff it's made of, and the information that is embedded in it. It takes up space. You can crush it, make it smaller. But if you take away all that space, so it measures zero inches by zero inches by zero inches, the what? The bag no longer exists. 
It's composed of stuff. It's made of fundamental particles and the forces binding them together. If you take away all the stuff, all the atoms and molecules, the what, the bag, no longer exists. It's full of information. It has descriptive attributes, explicit and precise dimension, shape, weight, structure, composition, layers, strength, reflective, reflectivity, flexibility, durability, colors. In addition, the words or symbols on the what identify the purpose for the what's existence. If you take away its descriptive attributes, its information, the what, the bag, no longer exists. You would never confuse the bag's dimension with the stuff it's made of. Inches and plastic are two different things. You would never confuse the stuff it's made of with its descriptive attributes. Fundamental particles and the forces binding them together are not the same as shape, color, or written language. Molecules and information are two different things. This one bag is triune. It is one what and three things. It is all three things all the time. It is never just one of them. It's never just space. It's never just stuff. It's never just information. It is all three all the time. Please note, this potato chip bag is an analogy. The bag is like God because the bag is triune. The bag is unlike God because the bag is part of creation. One of God's descriptive attributes is that he is holy. He is separate from his creation. He transcends it. I told the group at our table that I worship the creator God of the Bible. I said I worship one God who is triune. God is one what and three persons. That one what is God. There is only one God. The one God is three persons. The Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. God is all three persons all the time. God is never just one of them. God is never just the Father. God is never just the Son. And God is never just the Holy Spirit. God is all the persons all the time. Christians believe that if you remove Jesus, God's Son, from God, then God no longer exists.